So one of the more common questions I get asked is how to set the float level in my DCOE Weber. Uh, it's reasonably simple. We just need a couple of tools and a bit of know-how. So the first thing we'll look at are the tools. Here we have a float gauge. This one happens to be 7.5 mil on this end and 6.5 mil on this end. We'll actually see a couple of little cutouts here. They are actually for the seams on the brass float because we're actually measuring from the float body, not from the seam. It can make a difference of half a mil, which can have an impact on mixtures. The other way we can actually measure is simply with a uh, metric drill bit. So this is a 12 mil drill bit, and we're going to use this one to measure the float level on our later model nitrofill float. Um, a couple of things I just want to mention. One is a lot of the time we see uh, or customers ask, can I exchange floats where there was once a brass float? Can I put a nitrofill float and vice versa? Um, we can, however, we need to pay attention to the differences in the top covers. The early model tops, for, for example, DCOE 9s and 13s, run a brass float. And we'll actually see that the tabs are significantly longer than the later model cover at the tops where a nitrofill float is, um, is installed. So it's probably a good almost 10 mil difference in height. Uh, you just need to be aware of that and the, the necessary modifications made when doing it. So the first design we're going to look at is the early uh, brass float top covers. This is a 40 DCOE 32 we have here. What we're going to do first is just pop on our gasket. Very important that the gasket does go on because it needs to be there for our measurement. Uh, for an accurate working height. Next we're just going to pop in our needle from our needle valve assembly and we'll actually just have a quick look. We'll notice that there's a spring-loaded ball in there and I'll discuss the importance of that in a moment. Next thing we're going to do is grab our float and we're just going to pop it in there like so and hold it in between the, the two tabs and then on the split end we'll see here we're going to pop through the brass um, pin. So we can just start it off like so and what I normally do is just grab a hammer and just very gently feed that through. And then we have our float installed. Now what we're going to do is hang it on its side like so. So now we're just going to go ahead and measure our um, float height. So it's this distance in here. Now I just want to point out that the tip of our needle valve is a spring-loaded ball. We only want it just lightly touching on it and not depressing it like that. So we'll see, it just hangs nicely. The idea of the ball, the spring-loaded ball, is to just minimize vibration passing through to the float and possibly um, aerating the fuel. So what we're gonna do is use our tool, there's the cutouts, and we'll see that there they clear the seams. If you don't happen to have one of these tools, don't worry. Just use a drill bit that's um, maybe half a mil smaller um, to allow for, for that, probably half a mil seam. Um, it is more accurate using the correct tool because um, it, it, I guess it minimizes any discrepancies that might be in the seam thickness. So we'll go ahead and we're just gonna run the tool in between the float and the gasket. And we're gonna see that this is a seven and a half mil, which is what we want. That's obviously too large. That's probably like eight and a half, nine millimeters. To adjust that, we're gonna bend this tab just here. So the tool we have can actually just slide under there nice and easy, and we can bend that up or down whichever way we need to go. Sometimes we'll actually find as well that one, one side sits higher than the other. Don't be afraid to just give them a bit of a twist, not too hard, don't wanna break the, um, the soldering, so we'll just give it a nice little twist and get it to uh, exactly where we need. But that's how we measure the, the, the float distance from the top of the um, cover. Um, we also need to measure the travel. Typically there's about eight, nine mil travel. And that is, so when, when we look at it, how it's sitting in the carburetor, that is closed and then that is all the way down. Obviously we want it to be sitting around there most of the time. To adjust the maximum travel, we need to remove the, uh, the float and we're actually just gonna uh, play with this little tab just in here. It butts up against the needle valve. You can probably just make it, up in the, make it out in there. So that's how we adjust the brass float. Now we'll have a quick look at how we adjust the nitrofill float. 
So here we have a late model um, 45 DCOE uh, 152G cover with a nitrofill float fitted. Um, it's a little bit different to make the measurement. We, we need to make sure that we are measuring from the center point of the float. Being triangular and flat across the top, if we go like so or like so, obviously there's different measurements in um, either end. So we need to just mark a center point, maybe just use a bit of uh, white out, um, and just mark your center line where you're gonna make your measurement from. Here I'm holding a 12 mil drill bit. Um, they come preset from the factory with 12 mil um, float level. And we're just going to feed that in here. Now we can actually see that it's sitting on the float ever so slightly there. So we can see that we need to just bend out that tab just here, just once again, just to get the correct float level. Once again, you can um, quite comfortably um, bend these back into shape if they happen to be um, favoring one side or the other. Um, but yeah, the most critical thing is to make sure that we are taking the measurement from the center point of the float. The same goes for the travel. Uh, we need to be taking it from the center of the, um, that center line again. Uh, so there we have um, adjusting flight levels on the DCOE series carburetor.